Welcome back. I'm Table Runner Crispy, and I'm very excited to be talking to you today about a game that I so desperately want to be madly in love with, which is Heroes Unlimited Second Edition. This is a game I I owned when I was oh I don't know 12, 13 years old, many 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 years ago. I had the old version with the artwork that I still have to say I, I think I prefer the older cover, but nothing against this cover. Uh, and unfortunately, that particular copy has disappeared from my collection in one of the many moves that we've made uh, by wife and I and our family. So um, I didn't have it. I, I did eventually pick it up again. And I have a, a new hardcover version of this game. And I am running this game. So I've, I've had a number of sessions now, introduced new people to the game. And I'm prepared to speak a little bit about what I like about it. Uh, and what I, I'm struggling with. So there's some there's some dislikes there too. A little bit of history on this game. Heroes Unlimited was originally pu published in 1984. It's a bit of a time capsule, and you'll I'll talk a little bit about that later. August 1st, 1984, first printing of Heroes Unlimited. It has essentially been in print since then, uh, which is impressive to me. 1998 saw a second edition of Heroes Unlimited, which added a few things such as magic. It added the uh, mutant animal creation character rules that were originally published in the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle books. And it, it also brought in a few new powers and the ability as an option to have your hero experience some, some insanity or crazy or essentially lose their faculties. Um, something that I haven't really played around with too much, but this special edition that I just showed you, this hardcover, was my copy was published in March 2021. And uh, that's, again, kudos to the company that they've had this particular game in print since 1984. The premise of the game, according to the game itself, on page 15 you'll find this, it says, every type of hero possible is at your fingertips, really. The idea behind Heroes Unlimited has always been to allow players to create or recreate virtually every type of comic book style hero imaginable. That's the premise of this game. And I'm gonna go through just a brief overview of what you'll find in the book. And then from my experience running this game or attempting to run this game uh, to new people, we'll talk a little bit about the likes and dislikes and whether or not, uh, in conclusion, whether or not they the game delivers on that premise of could you create any hero imaginable? Can you actually role play this game? And then of course, that's what I'm always interested in. Can you role play? So at the end of the day, does it role play? Okay. What do I like about it? The description of the powers is so great. I love the description of the powers, especially the major superpowers. Um, but before I go into that, I, I just mentioned that because it's important for me to to mention the powers as we go into the game, the book itself, because the book is organized around power categories. Those power categories, you could think of them sort of like, it's kind of like a, a character class. Uh, the categories are as follows, aliens, bionics, experiments, hardware, magic, mutants, physical training, psionics, robotics, special training, and then a special subcategory called the mega hero. The idea behind the mega hero is if you wanted to play a much higher power level, so uh, your Thor, your uh, Silver Surfer, your Superman, that kind of power level where you're way, way high up into the power scales. Um, if you wanted to play someone more like a Batman or, or has a minor power, maybe one of the X-Men that's not super powerful, that is entirely possible here with these uh, within these these categories, these power categories. And the superpowers themselves are divided between what are considered minor powers and major powers uh, with subtable sub tables, excuse me, for extraordinary attributes, altering physical structure. That's something like your human torch, your iceman, your colossus. Um, that's that's what that's. That's the altering physical structure. And then powers of control, uh, being able to puppeteer animals or other people or those that I haven't done a whole lot with that, but that's a, that's its own category. Okay, I've mentioned how I like the description of the powers because it's it's fun to read them. And 
<laughs> I find that I read a new power and I think, well, that's just completely broken. And then you read another one and you think the same thing. Oh, how could you possibly ever role play that? That's insane. It's just insanity. Uh, and I love that. <laughs> it's just kind of funny. Now, the, the system, and this is, I'm going to put this as a like. I was, I went into this with the assumption that the Palladium system, especially combat, is, is irreparably broken. It just doesn't work at all. And I was surprised that, for the most part, combat is not nearly as broken as I thought it would be. It, yes, there's a action-reaction dialogue that happens um, in combat. Yes, there are some characters that'll have more actions than others. And yes, it's a bit of a, it's a bit of an accounting on the part of the player and on the game master. How many actions have I used? If I want to do this one thing, does that take two actions, three actions, four actions? Does it take all of my actions? How would I, how is that going to work out? I, so there's, there's some complexity to it, but I think it's an, I think it does this, the system a bit of a disservice to say that it just doesn't work. It, it can work. And that was a bit of a surprise because I thought right away, oh, we're going to have to house rule this. Not necessarily. It's, it's not perfect. This is a bit of a time capsule from 1984, but I think it, I think it does work. All right. One thing that I do like, and it does relate to combat, though you can have heroes that seem almost impervious to harm. They're so tough, whether they have uh, an altered physical structure or they have bio armor or they have a whatever it may be. Maybe they're robotic or they're bionics or they have armor or magic that protects them. They'll have the ability to soak up damage until they are hit with a critical hit. Um, as I've mentioned in past reviews, I like systems where the critical hits feel deadly. And in this game, this game is no exception to that. A critical hit is always something that's a bit of a nail biter. Yes, you could be able to shrug off, you know, tank rounds, um, you can take take massive amounts of damage, but if a, if a, if you suffer a critical hit, it can and often is life threatening, and I like that. I think that's a good thing. The uh, the other thing too, this is a I've got this in. Well, it's a bit of a cheat, I suppose, but I have this as a bit of a like and a dislike. The skills in the game change your attributes, and I like that especially when it comes to physical skills. If you have a physical skill for running, it makes sense to me that that will alter your attribute that's tied to running or physical endurance or uh, physical prowess, perhaps, one of the several attributes that, are, uh, that make up your, your character. I like that. I, I do like that the skills have an influence there. And my last thing I wanted to... to say about heaping praise on the game uh, going through it is I love the artwork in this game. Now, uh, the, uh, the reason why I think it's important is because when you're playing a superhero game, I think it, it, it really helpful to have some art that makes you think of superheroes and remind you of the, your, your days collecting comics as a kid, or maybe you still collect them, but it's an older style and these are mostly black and white. It's not like modern games. There's one, I'll show it to you. There's one uh, color on the inside of the hardcover. Uh, so there's some ni a nice color piece there. But if I just flip to a random part of the book and show you the, the kind of art that you can expect in it, I just love this art. I think it's so great. There's, an, there's another one there. This black and white... Um, it's so good. I, I just think it's so well done. Um, and I just love it. It's a, it's a bit of a throwback because, and I think there's been some new pieces put in, but they're, they're just great. I, they've done The company's done a great job. Um, Palladium Books and Kevin Simbita. Um, 
I hope I'm pronouncing your name right, sir, but it's a very, very good, top notch. Love it. Just love it. it. I mean, that's obviously a subjective thing, um, but you, you, I don't, I can't see anyone would be dis, disappointed uh, with the artwork in the book. It's, it's not every page that has artwork. There's a lot of text in this book, but the artwork that's there is just great. Okay, not perfect. I've already mentioned it's a bit of a time capsule. Um, okay. Uh, this is painful for me to do because I just want to love this game so much. I, I'm so desperate to just have this be my favorite game. Ugh. All right. The rules can be needlessly complex and difficult to find. The, uh, this has always been, this has been a common complaint of Palladium books is that if you want to look something up quickly, good luck. It, it, you have to spend a lot of time in the book to get used to where you're going to have to reference. And, and sometimes the, the math involved to, to, to compute what the damage bonus would be when your super speed character is moving at Mach 1 versus moving at 300 miles per hour versus moving at 200 miles per hour and all of the differences there introduces a level of of rule granularity that doesn't seem to be worth it at, at a certain point um, you're just looking for an abstraction instead of a something that's really precise down to well if we you know we divide this by this and multiply it by that we can get this um, you can lift this much you can carry this much but then if you're this then you can carry that a multiple a different multiple of that you know, what if you were to throw it? What if you were to move? Like there's, there's a lot of calculations that become very, very detailed. And I'm not convinced that it's worthwhile. I'll, I'll talk a little bit why later on. The skills in the game, which I've already mentioned that have an influence on the attributes of your character, because this is a, a 1984 and then redone in 1998, the skills feel dated, in some cases very dated. So you, for example, when you look into the, uh, some of the technical skills or the communication skills, there's still an emphasis on radio or things of that nature. And I think that if running, if you're running it in a 1980s setting or even a 1990s setting, I think that would be completely fine. If you're trying to run a, a superhero game in a modern setting, you, it may be necessary to reskin some of these skills to bring them up to a modern standard. And that could be a bit of a an artifact. I'm, I'm speaking a little off the cuff here, but I wonder if the fact the the reason why some of the skills feel dated is because they're in many cases quite specific. If they were more general in nature, and maybe you could. If you were if you were to uh, update it a little bit, maybe just taking some of that specificity away and having it be more general would work. Some powers, and this is the next one, some powers need significant interpretation from both the GM and the player. And that's not to say that the book doesn't go into or doesn't try to make an, an effort to describe what the power is. It's just that the as the power interacts in the world, uh, in many instances, you're going to have to wrap your head around what does this actually mean? How does that infl how does that work in the world? Both as the player and as the game master. As the game master, so you can make sure that the world isn't the world still is believable, that the if you're you're violating phys physics in a certain way, but it's consistently that way, and it interacts with the rest of the world in a in a consistent way, for the most part. And players too, because the game, and this is baked into how the experience works in the game. The game the the game is designed to encourage players to be inventive and cre and creative with their problem solving, both with their skills and with their powers. Well, that also assumes that the players will have a very good handle on what that power actually does. How does it work? And what does it look like? Um, and in some cases, there's 
not a whole lot of information on this. You have to, you have to figure it out, talk it over and, and get a common understanding in order for it to work. The, the, um, I'm going to skip this one. I'll come back to it. Character creation takes time. This is not like easy D six or even the life path system like traveler, uh, as much as a life path system such as traveler can take more time. It's this takes more time than that. At least when you're starting off, I can imagine if you've played the game for many, many years, then you can quickly go through and you can watch on YouTube. You can find people creating characters. And maybe if there's interest, I'll create a character on stream and you can see how it works. Uh, the, but for those that are new to the game, if you're just kind of, you know what, I'm always kind of wanted to try this out. Be prepared to spend significant time on that first character. I'll tell you a little bit of a story. The first character I made for our in-person group, because I, we had rolled up the powers randomly, which was really fun, rolled up the, the power categories randomly. And I said, okay, here's what they are. And then I had them roll their, their attributes. As you do, we go through character creation. And then I told them, cause I, I, it's not my first crack at the game. I said, I'll, I will, I'll flesh out the rest of this character sheet for you. Well, the first one I tackled was an alien so the power category was alien. And then the subcategory within the alien category was alien bionics. So I had to build the alien and then rebuild the character using the bionic section. It took, it took a long time. It was significant. It was a big time investment that can be very intimidating. And just in general, um, looking at the game and trying to read the game, my players have come back and said, you know, I'm, I'm really, you know, I'm, I'm kind of struggling. Like I, I sit down to read it and I'm not sure, I'm not sure what I'm reading. I, I feel like there's stuff, like I'm missing things. I, and I can, I can relate. I've read the book. I've read it a few times now and I have all of the supplements except for the setting specific supplements like Century City. I don't have that one or Gramercy Island. I don't have that one either. Um, but it's, it's a bit of a learning curve. And when I say that, I'm, I'm probably downplaying it. It's a significant time investment, uh, both for character creation and to get a decent handle on the system itself. It's not to say that it's, it's terribly complex. I don't believe it's complex. It's just it's, the, it's perhaps partly how it's laid out. Um, so introducing this game to new people, it's, I think there's, I'm going to give a suggestion of what I think works better having done this recently. And I'm still playing this game. I'll play it tomorrow with my in-person group and they're excited to see what happens, uh, and, and see where the, what their heroes do. And I don't have no idea what their heroes are going to do. <laughs> it's going to be, it's going to be interesting. Prep on this game is, is a bit of a challenge. Uh, so I would, I would lean more towards, um, not, I, I don't think that a railroad works very well here. I think that it's more fun for everyone involved to have more of an in-character role play experience. And that leads to my final dislike about the system. The system has, I think the game works best if it's very cinematic. If you're, if you're if you as the game master and, and others as players, if you're thinking of it in terms of a superhero show or movie or com even a comic book, if you're, if you're picturing it that way, then I think that it works well. Where it breaks down is where the, the more nitty-gritty, minutia-type rules of the, the system start to impose a a slow down and, and massive amount, massive, more than light calculations to determine damage or range or, or lifting or carrying capacity. Once that, once that starts to intrude, the game slows down and it loses that cinematic feel. And I don't think it works as well. So it's uh, some, but I guess what I'm saying is that some of the mechanics of the game 
and the assum the assumptions for calculations for powers and such are in opposition to the way the game works best where it's it's a cinematic style uh, players should not be worried so much about selecting from a list of potential attacks as they are of role playing their character role playing that that hero in combat does he have a signature move like does he like for example we had a um, a situation it, the, where a uh, one of the heroes grabbed an opponent that it, it was more of a demonic looking thing and he's got super strength and so the superhero just tosses him into a lake and while he's doing that another hero that can influence weight is uh is altering the weight the mass of this this opponent so that they can be thrown further well as a cinematic type thing as a, as a role in character role play i think that works absolutely fine and it, it could be fast and cool and and great where it doesn't work is if we now start to go okay well this is how many pounds they're lighter than this so that we have to refer that to what is the maximum throwing weight or how does that relate to how far this character can throw him and then we calculate the distance that they can throw it do you see what i mean that that can be that to me is in they don't mesh well together and i because i'm more interested in being in character and i ask my players and myself included, as much as possible, we're going to be in character. We're not going to be talking about the rules. We're going to be playing um, instead of looking up charts and and figuring out these distances and all of that. It just so that crunchy mechanic and crunch in, in general. Just as an aside, I'm not opposed to having a a, a degree of of granularity or 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 more detailed rules, I think are fine. The problem becomes when, because you're dealing with superheroes that are constantly adjusting all of the parameters of weight or strength or size, you're, you're either going to have to uh, just determine ballparks, maybe it's between this, it's about the size of a car, okay, about the size of the car can do this, um, rather than recalculate down to the last thing well, the last unit of measure what that change has done i'm going to move on because i think i'm i've spent a little too much time on that one let's uh let's conclude because <laughs> these things can be a little hard to watch and i i don't i hope that i hope more people especially those of of my vintage um that grew up with things like this they're still in print. You can still get it. And you know what? Why not? Why not get it? It's, does it deliver on the premise? I think it does. I, I do. I think it does. It's you. The premise again was you can play any hero you can imagine. And that's true. One of the things that's so fun about this is randomly determining your hero's powers. And then trying to imagine how you're gonna how are you gonna play that? What kind of hero is that? Uh, it's it's great. And you'll it, now uh, be aware. This is not a balanced game. The, that's not it's not intended to be. You could have a guy that's just really good at making cars, <laughs> and he's got a souped up supercar, and next to him is a guy that can turn himself into living energy okay there's there's very little comparison <laughs> between the two but if you have if you have players that are really if they can put themselves if they're good role players and they can they they love the genre so if you're not into the superhero genre this isn't for you you're not gonna like it you're gonna it's gonna feel silly or stupid or just broken but for those of us that do do you have a fond memories of comic book superheroes? There's something here. You can use it. Now, uh, the way I'm using it in my in person, my, my game, my weekly game is I'm leaning much more towards that cinematic style. And 
uh, I'm not using all of the rules that are in in terms of you know here's the carrying capacity here's this here's that we're we're, we're trying to to simplify that uh, I'd love to see uh, I you know what part of me is like yeah we just need a new version of this but the, another part of me is like there's other superhero games that are around and it's it's kind of neat to have something that's still in print from 1984 uh, that still kind of works you can you can make it work it's going to it's going to require effort on your part to uh to have this be a successful game and it's going to require the right group but uh i'm pleased to report that in my case i'm you know gaming with some some people of similar vintage to to myself and we're having a blast uh, your mileage may vary but uh, but check it out. Still around. Heroes Unlimited Second Edition. Thanks for watching. Uh, it, please leave comments and questions in the uh, in in the comments below. Um, if you do want to see more about Heroes Unlimited, I'm I'm happy to do that. Again, I'm trying I'm trying to love this game. It's it's not perfect. In some cases, it's it's that thing that it's difficult to love. Uh, but dang it, I'm, I'm still going to try. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one. Talk to you later. Bye.